people of Samoa know Louisa Saupor as the tiny lady with the little crutch. Born with the rare genetic disorder, brittle bones. She's just one meter tall. I love feeding the chicken, but I don't like killing the chicken. Many people born with brittle bones don't survive. As a child, Louisa couldn't walk because she couldn't support her weight. She repeatedly fractured her bones. When I was young, even if I bang my hand just like that, bone break. Surgeons inserted steel rods into both legs. Today, she's one of the few people with brittle bones who can walk. When her entire family moved from Samoa to New Zealand, they left Louisa behind with her grandmother. They were told she wouldn't get permanent residency because of her disability. Before Louisa born, small like this, I put on the pillow and can't sleep in my foot, never do anything, only eat and sleep. <laughs> In a nation of strongly built men and women, Louisa stands out all the more. It's a common thing in Samoa when people look at you and judge you because you have a disability. I don't like to go to town because people like pointing hands at you and say, oh look, here comes the short person or whatever. Some people, believe that having a disability or born with a disability is a curse. I ignore them, you know, that it hurts. <laughs> Give my mouth away. <laughs> Someone kept this scared of me. I don't know why. As an adult, Louisa has strived to be independent. She's found some work, but she's never married. So she's needed family to support her. Now, at 32, she's just found out she's pregnant. When I found out I was pregnant, I was surprised. I mean, I never thought that I can have a child. Chicky, go and make a baby. <laughs> <laughs> not to kill them. <laughs> it's no good. I can't take care. I'm too old because my leg. I can't live because babies grow up too heavy. <laughs> Most people think it's shocking, you know. So a few people say things about you, you know. How can she have this child? How can she have this baby? What kind of man would do such thing for a person to a person with a disability? Those kind of things, <laughs> they did it to me. <laughs> and you know what I said to them? Well, I'm sorry if you had the life, I also got a life. Louise is excited and scared. Doctors fear her body won't cope with pregnancy. There's concern that the baby or Louisa could die. And with no husband to support her, how could she hope to raise a child? Three months into the pregnancy, the Samoan government appeals to New Zealand to give Louisa a specialist medical visa and treatment not available in the islands. The government agrees to pay for my treatment, my medical treatment in New Zealand. But there's an expectation from her government. If tests prove the baby also has brittle bones, the pregnancy is to be terminated. The agreement can never be break if it turns out to be, you know, a disability then. I must well terminate. 
but if not, I get to keep him. Louise's baby son, Lance, is born by cesarean, eight weeks premature. Doctors are astounded she carried the baby that long. Days later, Louise is striding around the hospital. She's made of strong stuff. See, it's just a miracle. Cause not, I thought he's not gonna be like, you know, normal, but look, he's a fast growing boy. <laughs> It's just happy, you know. It's finally, you know, I never imagined that I'll ever have a child. My family, they worried about who's gonna help me look after the baby. It's easy for me to look after him at this size, right? But as he grow up, it's gonna be very hard for me. My mom, wants to leave the baby here and I go back home. But I can't. <laughs> can't be separated. It wasn't planned. It was just... came out of nowhere. <laughs> In her first days out of hospital, Louisa stays with her sister in Auckland. It's a large blended family and they welcome the cousin from Samoa. Everyone's here in New Zealand. It's just me and my grandmother's back home now. There is no support for me and my babies back home. That's the reason why my mom, my family is trying to keep me here. Louise's mother has come up from Wellington to help while the family talk through Louise's future. Yay. It's me and my mom have to take turns. Like I wake up nighttime until like three o'clock feet. <laughs> the showering is for my mom's work. Not really yet to hold him that time. I'm afraid that he might slip off my hand and then drown. As mother and baby bond, there's a cloud hanging over their futures. Ooh. Louise's medical visa is limited. Once she recovers from her cesarean, she must leave New Zealand. It's the only one my kids in Samoa. What's happening to, to, to stay here, to make her stay here and the baby. Mm. Louise has decided to apply for New Zealand residency so her mother can help raise her baby. Smile, don't cry. A month has passed. Louise's mother has returned to Wellington, to her own young children, and taken baby Lance with her. <laughs> Louise has had to stay in Auckland for medical appointments. I can't sleep, I can't eat, I cry at night time. I look at his photo and I kiss my photo, my phone, say goodnight to him. Then I sleep and I wake up, I look at the photo. You know, that gives me the courage to go on by looking at his photos. But at night time when I wake up, my eyes was like, you know, I've been crying all night. It's just so hard. At last, Louisa is reunited with her baby. Louisa's mother is working round the clock. She arrives home from her cleaning job at daybreak to take over the morning feed.
I don't want to get too attached to my son at this stage because I don't know it, whether I'm going or stay. Because I rather keep a little distance from him, you know, to help me to cope, you know, to, to if I leave him. Because if I can't leave him, definitely can't leave him. If I'm doing him, if I'm working with him every day. So, just let my mom do it. Maybe I, I will take care of the baby. And what, what will Louisa do, do you think? Look for a job. Okay. In New Zealand? Yeah. She's trying to to apply the swimmers to stay for <coughs> She's good here and if the baby Sam so was no good for her. In a bid to strengthen her application, Louisa meets with the local member of parliament, Trevor Mallard. My wish is to stay here, be with him, support my family, get a job. Mm -hmm. That's my only aim. Okay. He can grow up better here. The, the normal practice with a limited visa is that it's very hard to get them extended. In this case, it can't be the extension of a visa. It'll have to be a, a new to start with visitor's visa and, and, then, and then possibly, hopefully, something, something going forward. Um, but they are, they are issued on quite strict conditions and, and, and you have to be very careful not to overstay them. Uh, because if you do overstay, it means, uh, and you are deported, although I can't imagine them deporting someone with such a young baby, um, but if someone was deported, then they can't come back for five years. So it's really important that we get it right. Yeah. All right, OK. That's... So we'll let the officials deal with it. We'll let them know that I'm going to support you. No guarantees. You know, there's no, I can't, you know, I'm a no backbench MP, no promises. <laughs> okay. I promise to work for you. Oh, yeah. OK? Louise's bid to stay in New Zealand has been rejected. Even though Lance was born in New Zealand, he too must leave the country. There's no government funding in Samoa to provide extra help for Louisa and her baby. And no government support means Louisa's mum must go as well, leaving her own children and husband behind. Not 100%, you know, happy, but no other option. <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> Baby Lance is only three months old, mm -hmm. but already he's almost half Louisa's height. I can't really hold him much longer. Gotta see how he moves, kicking everything. Hey, stop kicking. It's clear Louisa can't manage her baby alone. I can't carry him, you know, as much as I want to. But you just, I can't. Louise's mum can't stay in Samoa forever. One option is that she adopts her grandson, separating Louisa from her baby. We're very loyal. Why? It's a 
the hardest decision to make at the moment. I have to make my mom happy with everything she's done for me. The more I'm with him, the more it's going to be very hard for me to let him go. So heavy! Heavy little special. Ah, so heavy. Yo. Louise's mum is convinced she needs to take Lance back to New Zealand. But she's now worried how Louisa will cope with the loss of her baby. I put him here to make him go sleep because I can't hold him. People will laugh at you that you have a mother with disability. But if you brought up your son knowing what kind of person you really are, then he, you never know, you might, he might fight back for you. You know, I have nothing to give him. All I can give him was my love, you know? It's the most important part of a kid, spending time with the mother. <laughs> That's not you. Yep. Hey, this is your name. Yeah, because um, she misses, she misses my little brother, leaving him alone at home. She needs to um, go back. I'm so sad. That's why I'm, si I'm sitting here for a month and I want to take the baby. That um, does she understand me? I know that it's really hard for me, but, but I, you know, rather I let her adopt my son than anyone else. But it's only the fact that I'm, I'm going to miss him, be able to go up with him. But I know he's in good hands. Hey, baby. Bye. Louise's mother has already been here five weeks. The whole family is under pressure to reach a decision about Lance's future. I sometimes dream if I let him go, he might not know, you know, I'm his mother or he might grow up taller than me and might not believe that he's my son, that I'm his mother. That's the funny thing, but growing up with him it gives him more confidence that I am his mother. Samoan protocol dictates the family chief will decide what happens. He's <laughs> The decision is not for you only. The decision is for you and your baby. Because now there's a two of you. So what do you have in mind? To do your deciding. As long as you know that the family is, uh, you know, the family is behind the decision you're making. You know, whether good or indifference is a decision 
And the family is prepared to do whatever it's necessary, as long as you get the interest of the baby and yourself as well. Because we need to face the reality that you are a bit challenged in the physical department. It's important that the, the baby's health is, is, is the, in the center of whatever we decide to do. Oh. So what's the worst if, you're, if, if your baby just stay here with you? Just... The worst thing if he stays, mm -hmm. I won't be able to give him everything, like caring for him, supporting him. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't hold him and carry him around. Mm -hmm. He might get sick, mm -hmm. can't take him to the doctor. Mm -hmm. What is the worst thing that can happen if your mum take your baby overseas to New Zealand to look after? He might not consider me as a mother. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that New Zealand is the best place for your baby? Yeah. It's a hard decision. It's a very hard decision for you. I very think hard if I live in here. And whatever decision you make is always a good decision. Some decisions have unfavorable outcome, but at the end of the day, they are unfavorable outcome, and we learn from it and move forward. She said, um, I just want to be with him, man. Uh. Mm. Just... And that's fair enough. We're just talking about stuff and, you know, just with the hope that it lighten the loop. For the second time in her life, Louise is facing a gut-wrenching separation from her family. Her five brothers and sisters all live in New Zealand now. I really want a win-win thing, but for my family, I had to do what I have no other choice. Twelve months ago, Louise had dared to imagine life as a mother. But now, her disability and bureaucracy stand in the way of her dream. Hi. Morning. Good morning. Louisa brings Lance in to show him off to her old workmates at the NOLA Trust. The Trust advocates for the rights of people with disabilities in Samoa. She will make a fine mother. And she deserves to have that baby. Mm. Huh? Hey, baby. You have a good mother. Mm. Unable to find much paid employment, Louise has done voluntary work here for the last 10 years. Finding a job here is really hard because I have a disability. They still have that thinking that we can't do anything. It's called discrimination. If Louisa has to give up Lance, no. she'll come back to Nola to help out. <laughs> As she walks through the lawyer's door, Louise is preparing to hand her baby over for adoption. You find yourself in an unenviable position. And that means I don't have, you know, time to be see him go up there. Yeah. And yeah. he won't be having attachment thing. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest thing. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other option is that your son stays with you and maybe your family can assist with uh, hiring someone for like a babysitter to help you at home. Here, yeah, if you don't want to give up your child and you want to grow up, him to grow up with you, then that well, might be another option. Problem is that my mom's too attached to him. Uh, if he leaves my baby, she gets sick. Um, and plus, <laughs> and plus, um, I, I don't have, if I work, the, my pay would never 
cover up baby stuff and the baby suit? Yeah, I, I, I just... Because I've been stressed a lot and just didn't adopt my son. And I know it hurts, but in my mind, it's only for the best of my son. Because, you know, I can take care of him, but I need help, you know? And a good environment for him. So we just go ahead with the adoption thing. And so well, then it takes a lot of courage to to do what you're doing, and I suppose uh, it's for your son's benefit. Well, I just want a family of my own. I have to go by the rules and to respect my family. That's what we were brought up to. I don't know what I would do. Not having my son to play with. Hey. Hey. You wanna leave mommy? No.